Hello, good evening everyone. I am Dr. Aravind and today uh, I shall begin my classes with a very basic topic which is called as intrauterine insemination or what we commonly refer as IUI. We all know that IUI is a very basic procedure in fertility practice and in today's discussion about of about 45 minutes, we will know the basic principles of IUI's theoretical basis and how to do an IUI in practice. This session would be not limited to for just for examination purpose, but I believe it would help you to uh, master the technique of IUI and practice uh, to your patients as well. So what is IUI? How do you define an IUI? So we know that it is a direct transfer of processed spermatozoa into the uterine cavity at the time of ovulation in a, in a natural or stimulated cycle. You can see this picture. This is the vagina. We have the uterine cavity and the fallopian tubes. And we know the fertilization usually occurs in the fallopian tubes. In a normal intercourse, when the spermatozoa or the semen is ejaculated in the vagina, only 25% of them travels and reach the tubes. So the principle of IUI is to increase the density of spermatozoa near to the site of fertilization. We know which is the site of fertilization, it is a fallopian tube. So if we transfer the spermatozoa into the uterine cavity that is here, there is a larger number of sperm concentration near the fallopian tubes. That is one principle of IUI. Apart from this, we also stimulate the ovary so that more number of eggs are released from the ovary, there may be one or two, which also increases the chance for a successful conception. So these are the two rationales behind the procedure of intrauterine insemination. So we have a common clinical scenario which occur usually in our clinics. There is a patient who is Mrs. X, we call her Mrs. X, she is 27 years old and Mr. Y, she, he is 32 years old, both are in IT sector. They are married for a period of 3 years, that is a reasonable degree or time to conceive, that is the prerequisite for IUI. And they are young, they are 27 and 32, reasonably young couple. So she has got regular cycles. A scan, normal scan is there and AFC. What is AFC? AFC stands for antral follicle count, which is a mark of ovarian reserve. So that is also quite normal. Whereas her husband's semen analysis, when you see that the count, sperm concentration is 12 million per ml, the mortality is 30 percentage and with 3 percentage normal forms. So those who are aware of the WHO latest guidelines on semen analysis, this belongs to a category called as mild or minimal oligo aspermia. Why we call oligo? Because the sperm count which normal range is about 15 million, it is slightly lesser. We call it asthenosospermia because that mortality is also to a lower side. It is not very severely less but it is slightly to the lower side. And uh, the normal cutoff of morphology according to the WHO latest semen analysis, 4% of normal. In this case also it is 3%. So there is also mild OAT or oligoacinoteratosospermia. So this category of uh, patients or this couple would be an ideal candidate for performing this procedure which we call as the IUI. Okay. So, uh, what are the common indications to begin with? Which all people, which all couple we prefer to do IUI? IUI cannot be done for everybody. It may not benefit them. It will just increase the cost of treatment and the emotional burden on the couple. Who will benefit maximum from IUI? That we should know. And whom should we should not do IUI also should be known. So, the commonest indications of performing IUI if you take into divide into two three that is first male factor then female factor we will discuss and then a combined combination of all these factors so first let us see male factor i already mentioned about this this is moderate oat or moderate oligoastenoteratosospermia so what do you call moderate if the count is between say if there is no hard and fast definition for, for moderate between 5 to 15 million 
mortality is somewhere between 15 to uh, 15 to 30 percentage so all this comes in the moderate range of oligosteratospermia these men would definitely benefit from an iui whereas if the degree of problem is very severe that is the count is less than 5 million or the mortality is very less that is 99 percentage immortal they may not benefit from iui so that is mild or moderate oat next comes sexual problems we all know sexual problems are very common in today and there are a lot of couple who suffer from sexual problems which could be due to there are many sexual problems the commonest which is the commonest one which is the erectile dysfunction or psych which is a psychosexual problem mostly due to performance anxiety so those with erectile dysfunction their sexual frequency will be less and they may not be having a regular normal sexual intercourse so that is one of the reasons for performing an iui and ejaculatory disturbances which could be retrograde ejaculation retrograde means as the ejaculation occurs instead of the semen coming through the urethra and out of the penis there is a flow back of the cement to the bladder okay so there are many conditions which cause retrograde ejaculation so that is also an indication for iui uh, we have to take extra measures to get the sperm from the bladder which we shall be discussing in subsequent sessions then it is called an ejaculation an ejaculation means even after a, a, a period of intercourse the man is unable to produce the semen out he is unable to achieve the organism and eject the uh, spermatozoa. This is called as an ejaculation. This is also an indication for IUI. Then comes the anatomical defects in the uh, penis, like uh, we may know hypospadiasis, epispadiasis, in which the urethral opening is situated abnormally so that a proper intercourse is not possible. So these are the sexual problems which is an indication for performing an IUI. Then comes uh, use of cryopreserved semen. We know now most many of times the couple are not staying together. They have to be separate. The husband has to go. So he can give a semen sample in, to the, in the store the, in the fertility clinic and that can be used for IUI. And when the semen sample is highly viscous. So we the semen when it is ejaculated, it is in the form of a coagulum. That is... Uh, it is in a viscous, uh, it's like a jelly-like thing, which undergoes something called as liquefaction. In half an hour, it undergoes liquefaction, where it becomes more of a liquid form. Only in a liquefied salmon sample, the spermatozoa can move ahead to the uh, female genital tract. So, in the highly viscous salmon sample, uh, the ascent of spermatozoa may be little less, and that also, such patients also, will uh, benefit from an IUI. So this we can call as a male factor uh, problems, which is an indication for IUI. There's one more donor insemination in which you are using the another man's sperm for IUI, which I should discuss in the next slide. And the female factor and ovulation, that is even after repeated uh, example in PCOS, polycystic ovarian sy syndrome, the ovulation is not proper, so you have to give uh, injections, you have to give gonadotropins or oral ovulogens, and finally the ovulation happens. So in that case, if you do a procedure called IUI, there is an increased chance for pregnancy, so an ovulation. Cervical factors. Cervical factors means, uh, we know uh, the, the spermatozoa is to bypass the cervical mucus and reach the uterine cavity and the tubes. So, because of hostile cervix, because of immunological problems like antisperm antibodies or absent dry mucus in the cervical um, canal, the SN may not be proper. So, in those cases, it is indication. And in case of mild endometriosis, there is a lot of debate whether IUI can be done or not. But uh, there is no problem in doing that. But whether it will be effective is doubtful. But still, we can call a mild endometriosis, not a severe endometriosis, mild endometriosis as indication. And again, female sexual dysfunction, like lows, less libido or vaginismus, in which sexual activity is not occurring in the correct way, that is also an indication for IUI. And if you put both the factors together, that is the male and female factors combined, 
unexplained infertility where you investigate maximum uh, the all the basic investigations are done nothing you can find abnormal definitely the according to the latest ashray that is the european society for human reproduction and the asrm that is american society for reproductive medicine both are international organizations the, which are propagating the guidelines for treatment so they say in unexplained infertility iui is the treatment of choice zero discordant couple that is again relevant in day to day practice when one where suppose a man is affected by hiv the female is negative for hiv but uh, obviously with uh, techniques like prep we can reduce the viral load even normal intercourse is possible but with iui and repeated semen processing the viral load is negligibly low in the process sample and iui is a effective way to reduce the risk of transmission in zero discordant couple then immunological factors like and again it is related to the cervical factors only when there is anti sperm antibodies the spermatozoa ascent is inhibited because of these immunological factors so that is also an indication for iui so again just recollect fast male factor is most commonly moderate oat or mild oat sexual problems female part and ovulation cervical factors and mainly unexplained infertility and other things these are the common indications while where we perform an intrauterine insemination